everybody, Ray Brem here. Welcome to The Revolution. And today I am speaking with Tanya Taggart Camacho on how to get booked to speak. She's often referred to as, as the media darling. She is a former investigative news journalist turned speaking publicity and media strategist. She helps experts, authors, and coaches go from totally unknown to industry influencer and even business celebrity. We all want that. Tanya has students in eight countries who together have generated over 7.4 million in free publicity, appearing in the New York Times, Forbes, Huffington Post, and on CNN, BBC World News, and Fox, to name a few. I'm going to ask Tanya how you, as an author, can get your book to get booked to speak. And if you find these tips helpful, we'll share how to access Tanya's upcoming free online training, where she'll share how to close up to 400% more clients in the next 45 days with high converting video to sell and speak to sell funnels. And that's even if you've never successfully sold from video or stage before. And you can find the link to register for that somewhere on the below, behind, somewhere around this video. And so let's dive in. Welcome, Tanya. Good to see you. Hey, Ray. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. And I should add, Tanya is the star of the Netflix show Downton Under, which is a combination of Downton Abbey and Down Under, because she's from Australia. It's a bad joke, I know, but that's how I got to start everything here. That's an awesome joke. I'm going to steal it. <laughs> I've watched every episode of Downton Abbey, so I can use that joke. Have you so seen the new about. movie? No. When did it come out? Uh, a couple of weeks ago. It came out the same time as Rambo. I chose Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> Last Blood. It was Man, awesome. that's a great title. I haven't seen it, but that's a great title for it. First Blood, Last Blood. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm a big movie guy. I'm, um, I've, I'm a big movie guy, but I've become a Netflix binge watcher, much to the detriment of all the gurus saying, don't watch Netflix, study this. But I go back, I'll watch an episode, then I'll go hit my computer and study a little bit. So I try to do a little bit of both. That's awesome. But we are here today because you are the authority on speaking publicly. And let me, I guess my first question would be, why would you want to add speaking to uh, your publicity and marketing strategy as an author? Yeah, it's a great question. And I actually have three favorite ways to uh, increase your visibility, get seen as an influencer, an expert and authority. And one of those obviously is to get on TV, get in those Forbes, those, those big media publications. Uh, another one, of course, is to write a book. And, and then the other one is speaking. And the cool thing about how they go together is quite often um, a lot of meeting planners who are booking their speakers, they want you to have a book to book you as a speaker. So those of you who are crafting a book currently or you already have your book, you're already a step ahead. Head, and that's totally awesome but the cool thing about speaking is that when you are the expert in the room when you are speaking down the front of the room that immediately gives you that credibility and that authority and the other and you can't fake being an expert when you're live there in front of the room so it builds what it is that you're wanting to achieve which is to be seen as the expert in the room but the other cool thing about speaking my favorite thing about speaking it is the fastest way to drive sales and revenue into your business and the other cool thing too is it's a really good testing ground because when you are in front of a live audience you really see where people kind of fall asleep and get on their phones and where the tumbleweeds are and you see where people are leaning in and they want to hear more so even if you haven't finished your book you could be going out speaking and road testing testing some of that content to make sure that you're going to have a bestseller um, and through speaking you get other speaking engagements as well and whenever you have a speaking engagement in your schedule you are looking at dollars that you could start to forecast so that once you've been speaking a little while and you know that when I have this many people in a room, I'm going to close this many people on this price product and therefore I'm going to create this much revenue. Um, so using your book to get that foot in the door and then to go out and start using some of that content to create your signature talk to drive people into sales and offers is incredibly, incredibly powerful. And the other thing too, Ray, is that simply by promoting where you are speaking can also be driving sales, book sales and anticipation behind the scenes. So it is an absolutely turbocharged publicity machine. So those of you who are working with Ray, you are totally blessed and we need to get you out there speaking as soon as possible. You just, you just touched on something that's really cool because 
I don't think it comes to the forefront of everyone's minds, but I, I know Russell Brunson does this, is he will test content he's putting in his books by speaking about it by, put, you know, maybe it's podcast first, but then he will test different concepts on stage and see who resonates with what and what kind of uh, feedback he gets, what kind of objections, and he helps that helps him build the content yeah. and that's really cool but of course like you said it's also a great way to actually earn money from your book because you, you know royalties aren't going to most of the time aren't going to do it yeah that's right i mean i was uh, i worked with quite a few authors and you know helped them on their uh, national tours their publicity tours and all of them say you don't get rich from selling books unless like you're JK Rowling or something like that. Right. But you can create a lot of revenue from your book when you add that speaking component into it. And I love what you said, Ray, about Russell Brunson, because it's so true. I mean, you know, I moved from Australia to America and the first thing I did is I went out speaking. My product was tested and converting in Australia, but I wanted to see how a new market would respond. And the fastest, easiest, cheapest way to do that is to go and speak and to test that new market Market and to test new products so uh, you know it is it's open to literally everybody whether you're already speaking or whether you haven't even started speaking there are so many events that you guys can be plugging into to create that anticipation for your book even if it's not completed have people get on that wait list but then that really important component is making sure the book speaks to what the market actually wants instead of what we think that they want because we tend to give them what they need and so when you're out there testing it and you're getting that feedback about that content all of a sudden you might start to restructure your book you might start to expand on certain chapters and even pull content out so it's incredibly powerful and of course you get your message in front of a lot of people as well so you get a lot of eyeballs on you that's great i mean i hate to go off script, but that's exactly what's happened to me in the last month where I've pulled content out. I've actually of a course, but it's the same, I've got a book that, that describes the course or, or is the precursor to the course. And I was given too much. I, you know, I was bringing people in that were new and, and, and I'm talking about bestseller and building a funnel and doing all this other stuff down the line. And it was like, but it wasn't until I pulled back and just said, look, here's a smaller chunk of how you get bestseller on Amazon. And, that completely changed. People could understand the message better. And it wasn't, I wouldn't have known that had I not tried to and put it out there in front of people. And so that, yeah. that's a great point. Now, so let's say I've got a book, then what? How do I get booked to speak once I've got that yeah. book? Well, if I could, Ray, I'd love to just top, uh, touch on what you just said. And, and that's also going to be part of, you know, getting booked to speak. But when you are sharing your book in that front of the room, some of the learnings of it, you obviously want to be capturing leads from within the room. So when you go to speak somewhere, you don't have the names and the emails or the phone numbers of the people that are sitting there in the room. And so what you really want to do is have some kind of lead magnet or ethical bribe. It might be a chapter from your book. It might be a um, a downloadable worksheet or a checklist that is a companion that goes with your book that is really sexy so that you can be signing up 85, 93% of the room so that you can continue the conversation long after you've left. And that's what a lot of people don't do. They think they just speak in front of the room, you know, and try to sell the books. Think beyond that. Think about how can I continue that conversation so I can get that incredibly value, valuable information. And quite often what I do after I speak, because I collect phone numbers and emails, I will make make follow-up phone calls and I will capture those sound bites from people who are in the audience who tell me exactly what the pain points are so that then I can speak to that and that then helps sell whatever I'm selling. And so if you want to do that, if you want to get booked to speak, firstly, of course, you need to have a killer talk title. And that might be the title of your book um, or it might be um, a hybrid version of that. But you do really need to have a sexy talk title so that you can stand out from everybody. And as part of that sexy talk title, I really want you to, to own your niche. So a meeting planner doesn't want someone who speaks about everything, right? It's not about, you know, oh, who's your customer? Everybody. Really niching in and thinking about who is my audience? Who am I speaking to? You know, what section of the bookstore am I looking to go to? And when that person comes to that shelf, what do they look like? What do they dress like? And so you want to have the signature talk title that really speaks to your niche so that you then can own your niche. And when you are pitching, you do need a media one sheet. You do need a a speaker profile and that should include a professional headshot that should include a bio about you if you've already been speaking it will also include some testimonials 
And that all testimonies are not created equally. So if you don't have any yet and you want to go and get some, um, when you're asking a meeting planner to give you a testimonial, you want them to be speaking to other meeting planners. So, you know, when a meeting planner books you to speak, they're taking a huge gamble because you might be brand new. They haven't seen you speak. You might not have a video yet of you speaking. And so you want to be able to show other meeting planners why, uh, why they're safe by booking you. And how we do that is we get a testimonial from other meeting planners um, about how the audience loved you, how fresh and dynamic your content was and why they absolutely must need to book you. But I want to set fears aside here for those who haven't started booking to speak or haven't, haven't spoken yet. We all start with no testimonials. We all start with never having spoken from stage before or sold from stage before. So if you don't have those, get them as quickly as you can, but don't let that be a barrier to you not getting out there and hustling now. Uh, and of course, your media profile, your speaker, one sheet should have um, usually about five signature talk titles. I have five on mine, but I really only speak to two. So we won't, don't just want that one topic, we want five topics. And of course, if you do have media logos, I would encourage you to put those on your um, speaker one sheet because that will also help you stand out as someone who has authority, influence and credibility um, and why they should book you. And then of course, if you won any awards, um, you can put those on there too. So having that really professional, this is why you need to book me uh, media one sheet, um, speaker one sheet is really important when you're going out there to get booked to speak with that killer talk title. Uh, and then of course, you're going to pitch that to a meeting planner and then you're going to follow up on the phone. The fortune of course uh, um, is in the follow. And, uh, and also having some takeaways. So when you pitch to that media planner, let them know what the audience is gonna get. This is not about you. This is not, um, I'd like to speak on your stage or I'd love for you to book me. This is about what is in it for their audience. And when you speak to the takeaways that they are going to be getting, that the audience are going to be getting, now they see the value of booking you to speak. Um, and so that's really um, very, very powerful. And another really important one too is um, speaking for free. So a lot of people, when they're looking to get booked to speak, they want to immediately get paid. But um, here's a really cool thing. When you speak for free, you can make a lot of money by simply having that lead magnet that we talked about. And you might be, um, I use two, I have two ethical bribes. I have, and I, and I, I, I position it this way. I will say something like, guys, with a little bit later, I'm gonna, um, I have got a, a couple of gifts for you, which with your permission, um, I'm gonna share with you. And then I go back into my content. When I get to that, I will say, now remember how I said I had some gifts for you? I'd love to share that with you, is that okay? And then I will say, okay, this is the gift for everybody. And that might be your downloadable worksheet, your companion blueprint, um, your you know three chapters of your yet to be released book. Um, so that's something really sexy for everybody. And then Additionally, I will have, it's very important how you position this guys, I will have some kind of strategy call, but I will have a sexy name for that. It might be a collaboration call, it might be a breakthrough call, it might be a story hunting session, something that's really sexy, but it's not for everybody in the room. It's only for those who are genuinely serious about whatever it is that you are doing. And then from that, they can come through to a strategy call with you and that's where you can turn them, um, and help them have that transformation and make some very, very serious revenue. Um, so it's not just about uh, getting paid to speak, it's just getting out there and speaking because you will get paid when you get it right. And there's some other cool ways to get booked to speak to. Um, you can get listed on some uh, speaker sites. There's speakerhub.com, speakermatch.com, espeaker.com. Then there's a public speakers association and there's the speakers guild as well. So once you have that media one sheet, that speaker one sheet, you can take the details of those and you can create profiles on speaker sites when you can get booked. And then of course, you guys have amazing networks uh, and you need to let people know that you want to get booked to speak. You'd be surprised how many people actually don't say, is anyone looking for a speaker or, you know, I'd love to get booked to speak. So put it out there on social media, say to people, Hey guys, you know, my book's almost coming or it's about to be released or, you know, I've released my book and I'd love to share my message and my mantra with the world. Do you have any suggestions of where I could um, go and speak? I'm looking for, you know, passion based entrepreneurs or service driven entrepreneurs or whatever it is that you are looking for. Just put it out there. And when you go to those networking groups uh, and you have that 30 second, um, elevator pitch, 
then you can also mention in that too. And you'll be very surprised how much people want to help you. And then of course, you can find places to get booked to speak, meet up, event bright, there's local networking events, chamber of commerces. And then of course, there's your various industry events. So there's your writers workshop events, speak to other writers about where they might have been spoken. And one of my favorite ones is a power partner. Okay, so some people might be a little bit reluctant to share where they speak and that's okay, that's scarcity mentality. There's a lot of us out there who have an abundance mentality and when you have a power partner and they are not in competition with you, you have books that are complementary. So if you have a business book and you have someone, uh, a colleague who's written a leadership book um, or a, a get more stuff done in less time kind of book, you can collaborate. And when that person has spoken, they can go, are you looking for other speakers? Oh, I know Ray, uh, he would be great for your audience. I've heard this about him, this is what he does. Would you like me to make an uh, introduction? And from there, it just starts to trickle and you keep getting booked to speak. So find some power partners um, is a really, really cool tip as well to get booked to speak. Okay. <laughs> that was a lot. Can you it? start over so I can start take some notes here? No, just kidding. <laughs> Am I talking what? too fast, by the way? Because when no, I started, well. I, you Not know. for me, <laughs> but maybe, who knows? Not for me. But the question is, so the question, there's, that's all great. Let's say I've got the book yeah. and I got nothing else. So I create a, I'll create a media one sheet. Now what? Like what, what yeah. would be the first thing you would do if you're like, I don't have a power partner. I don't have a, you know, I haven't listed myself in any of these things yet, but I want to speak. Is there somewhere where I can go or you know, the, the, the speakers associate, public speakers associate, speakers guild, one of the, like, what's the quickest way to at least get something free? And it doesn't have to be in front of a thousand people, right? I mean, I think everybody thinks they're going to do that or they have to jump to that, but it could be, you know, 20 people, right? I mean, what's, yeah. what would you, yeah. what would the expectation be? So a cool thing is what a lot of people don't realize is the bigger the room, the more people in the room, the lower the conversion rate right? The smaller the room, the higher the conversion rate in sales because there's this thing called intimacy factor. And there's also this thing called reciprocity. So when you're delivering really great content and you've got a small number of people in the room, they want to repay the favor. Um, so there is a really, but yes, you can make huge money on big stages. Russell Brunson, I think, broke the world record uh, earlier this year. Um, but it takes time to get there. And, you know, I sold... Um, over $750,000 from small rooms, from rooms with 15 or 20 people up to 75 people. So you don't need to get on big stages to make big bucks. So there's two ways to get started. You've got your speaker sheet, you've got your sexy signature talk title. What the heck do you do now? One, one of these ideas might scare you and the other one is super easy. So you want to start small. So expert interviews are great. Um, your signature talk title can be an expert interview title. So you can test on Facebook Lives, YouTube interviews, Instagram Lives. You can also test and get out there with the podcast and have lead, your, use the lead magnet that you would use from the front of the room on the podcast. Um, but when you're first getting out there starting, choose those smaller groups because you're going to be perfectly imperfect. Um, the very first time I, I, I sold from stage, I actually lost it in front of a live room and I cried and I'm not talking you know, an attractive kind of Hollywood little, you know, I'm talking full faced, ugly, crying, quivering chin, lost my breath. It was absolutely mortifying because I had so much pressure on me and I didn't want to go and do that on stage in front of 1200 people. So get out to those meetup groups, some of those small networking groups so you can get some confidence, you can get some experience. Uh, and that's how you can go and get booked straight away. But my favorite way, Ray, my favorite way is every single one of you right now could be selling from stage in five weeks from when you watch this, if you run your own event. You can book yourself, okay? You don't even need to have a media one sheet. You can have your sexy signature talk title, your three takeaways plus two bonuses. So that's what I like to do, three takeaways that they're gonna get plus two bonus points, so five takeaways all together. Run your own event. It's called a beta, a beta event. You can invite six people, Get them each to bring a friend. Now you have 12 people. Now you have a live audience. Now you can promote it. Now you can be seen to be an author that is speaking at an event. And now you can monetize your event. And that is the fastest way to get booked to speak, particularly at this time of the year. And you can be hitting 2020 with some experience under your belt. 
And from that experience, you can get some testimonials uh, and you can get proof in your product so you can hit the ground running. So I've, I've, I've kind of want to like steer off the map here and I've got my questions I want to ask, but the, so let's say you're going to, you're going to do something like that. Yeah. Are you, are this, the workshop that's coming up, are you going to teach everybody how to do that or give them the basics on how to, to um, do their own thing? I, I mean, this would be a great thing just to have, like you could have an event to help other people I'm sure you do this anyway, but I'm thinking in my head, like, oh my gosh, and I could bring a couple of speakers if they bring five people each, and now we got fifty. You, you know, could, whatever, you could, thirty-six. You could, however, when you're first starting, I would recommend you just do it yourself to start with, because it, as I said, it's going to be imperfect. You're still going to be learning, uh, and what I really want to give you permission to do, um, you know, I get a lot of questions about what should my talk flow like, when should I make my offer, and 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 by the way, in the free online training, we talk about the offer because you do want to have a really sexy offer um, as well as that signature talk title, and so I talk in how to make that offer, when to make that offer, which is a very very important part of selling from start. Stage. Um, but the really cool thing about when you are holding your own event, the other question I get is, you know, do I have to write a script? Do I have to memorize that script? And how am I going to remember everything and stay on time? And um, I want to give you permission to have a cheat sheet. And so when I first started running my own small events, and I'm talking about putting 12 or 15 people in the room, and this is in full integrity. And I, I feel a little bit emotional about this because honestly, right, it changed my life. I was a single mom, I was living on welfare, and I literally had enough money in the bank um, for six weeks rent. And at two o'clock in the morning, I would wake up in tears. Um, I would already been crying in my sleep because I had no idea how I was gonna pay the rent, how I was gonna feed my daughter, and I had no backup plan, and I had no family. And my friends were talking about running GoFundMe campaigns and all kinds of things. Um, and I learned how to sell from stage, and I started to run my own small workshops. And even though I cried in front of that room full of people, I had people sign up for my, my, my half day workshop, which is what I'm sharing with you. And I had about 15 people come to that um, half day workshop. I sold twelve and a half thousand dollars at that very first event. And I was living on 125 Australian dollars, which is like 90 American on groceries per week. You could not wipe the smile off my face for two weeks. It was life changing. And then I just continued to do that. Every two weeks, I was bringing in 12 and a half thousand, 12 and a half thousand. Then it got up to 28, then 32. And then most I sold in five hours that way was $78,000. And I had no prior experience like you guys. I just got out there. I learned how to sell to speak. So speaking from the front of the room is very different to selling from the front of the room. I learned how to do that. And that was in 15 and at the most 25 people uh, in a room. What's, what I'm finding very interesting is I've got a list of questions to ask you that I want to know. And I'm not even looking at that because I'm, I'm asking you questions. And then I look and I'm like, Oh, that's the question I was supposed to ask because this is flowing so well. Because that's that was my next question. Is like, okay, great. I've got a book on uh, a lot of people I work with. They've they've written books on things they learn to you know persevere or or succeed or down and out. So what what's the best way to monetize? You know what what exactly were you selling or what can people sell that, yeah. that would uh, you know make them believe that they can actually get to that point in five weeks. Cause yeah, I still well, think in my head, I am, I'm, I'm two to three months out. And then you just said five weeks and I know. As you're talking, I'm like, yeah, why couldn't it be five weeks? Uh, yeah. Why couldn't it be in five weeks? And I've had, when I've shared my story with people, um, some very high level people, they don't believe me that you can actually do that. And in full integrity, you can. And I have students and private clients who have done just that and have sold more from their very first um, talk when they sold from stage. Um, and so, you know, sorry, sorry, I've just had a, I've just had a coffee uh, moment. Can you repeat that question for me? Well, it's just like, what, what, what are the types of things that we could sell? Oh, if, if I've got yeah, a book, yeah. you know, yeah, sorry. For me, it's it's about helping people get books done and, and yeah. bestsellers and things like that. So maybe we could use that. But it's I you always think, well, what you know, I really where I struggle is like, well, what could I what I can help people in one way, but what can I 
What can I sell? Yeah. How do I monetize this? Yes. Uh, and this is one of the things that we do cover in the online training. And, and what I want you guys to think about is that the book is a business card, right? The book is a foot in the door to get booked to speak. It's the start, the, the, the tripwire in your, in your funnel. So what you need to think about is where does the book lead? Does the book lead to a, a sales call? Does the book lead to an online program? And, and what is the ultimate? So if you look at the, the, the customer journey, um, when someone comes and starts working with you, what's that price point that they come in? What's the next one? What's the next one? What's the next one? Because the truth is you can't learn everything that you need. You can't give them everything they need for a transformation in a 30 minute interview, a half day workshop, even a two day workshop. So there's this ultimately there's some kind of big product at the end and that might be a 25 K private coaching product. But then we have things along the way. And when you think about what is that end result that I'm bringing them, what is that end transformation? So they're in this pain now, and this is the promised land, which I know many of you will be familiar with. What is the journey along that way? And when you break up those products, you can start to think about, okay, well, at each of those points, I sincerely and genuinely want them to have some kind of transformation. But this one here is going to take more than one day. This one here is going to take three days, or this one here might take 12 months. And so that's this this program but what can I give them here and when you work when you start to look at what products that you have you can start to place the content so you can go okay well this I could teach them this but the next level of that that would take more time so that needs to come into this product and this I can teach them this and I can give them that takeaway and they can go away and use that but if they want that full transformation with the next step now that to come here so you're solving a pain and then you unfortunately you are opening that next level which is then your next product so think about your book. If you if you are doing a book on, and um, what was the example you gave? Persistence was it, right? Yeah, like perseverance. I learned these five success principles to get me out of the, you know, to make me happy. Yeah. Well, then, how could you how do, how can you turn that into either a coaching program or? a seminar or a workshop or an online program because you don't just want to go out there and speak for the sake of speaking and honestly unless you are JK Rowling you're not going to get rich from speaking so I want you to think about what kind of workshop program service or product could I link to that book to get them into that next part of my sales funnel because that is how you monetize um, speaking and if you are working on your next book or you're currently in the throes of writing your book take a moment take a couple of days and review reverse engineer. Okay. What could I sell for this book from? What links could I even put into this book to invite them to a strategy session or to put them into my nurture funnel? Do I have a downloadable or some kind of companion that goes with it? Take that moment to reverse engineer. It's not just about writing that book. It's about that bigger picture of where is that book leading them and how does it fit into my sales pipeline? And if it doesn't yet fit into my sales pipeline, how can I make it fit in so I can truly change the world? Because the truth is, the more money that we earn as authors, the more good that we can do in the world. And so I want you to feel great about, you know, making your book profitable because then you can truly impact and transform their lives, your life and other people's lives moving forward. Does that answer your question? I, oh yeah. No, I'm, I'm processing it myself. <laughs> and I think the, uh, that, that's one thing that's, man, if you, that's a whole course. And if you're teaching that, that's great is the, the whole, I just had somebody email me this the other day saying, you know, I'm trying to launch this local book for this, you know, historical society, but I think I should be, I could help people more if I actually worked on myself first. And I think that's exactly true. You can do more for the world by helping yourself first, put yourself in a position to help a lot more people. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, and I, you, you know, what I really commonly see and it, and it does, sad to me and concern me is I see a lot of people speaking and not bringing in that revenue. And if they don't have some kind of other business bringing in that revenue, what happens is you, you abandon speaking or you think that speaking doesn't work. And I, I got it. Honestly, um, it is the fastest way to bring revenue and authority into your business. So think about how does this book fit in? And it might be about, if you talk about the historical society, there's probably other people out there who would love to know and learn how to get involved with historical societies and, and how to turn a mammoth project into a smaller project. So you could have some kind of uh, program 
um, that, that comes as a spin-off from your book. So think about how did I create this book? Is there even a product in, you know, and how I did this, how I found about perseverance, how I became happy. So just, you know, you reverse engineered the content of your book. So now it's time to reverse engineer the programs that can go with your book so that you can truly be rewarded and impact more people's lives. Because here's the thing, and this is what I teach my students when they get nervous about going on stage. And I've got to tell you, I've spoken on hundreds of stages and I get nervous every single time. Not as bad as Elton John, I'm not vomiting, um, but, <laughs> but I get nervous every single time. And even before I came on this call with you, Ryan, I'm like, oh, I want to make sure I give you guys great content. I can feel the adrenaline pumping. I'm like, relax, Tanya, relax. Who was that one person that you were speaking to? Who was that one person in the room that came here today? that when they hear your message, you can truly change and transform and even save their life. When you stop thinking about selling, when you start thinking about connecting to that literally one person in the room whose life you can change or save, then you will automatically, you know, obviously you've got to get the structure right, but your conversions will be even higher and your nerves will dissipate. So yeah, I, it, it just pains me when I hear people stop speaking because it means that the world is being robbed of your message. Uh, it's a great point because the this imposter syndrome it affects everybody. I mean, I, I you know I know you via Jeff Walker's group, and I remember they did this thing. They were on this uh, going up the mountain in the what do you call it, the gondola or whatever, and they were to all and everyone in there was like these superstars, and they all talked about their, yeah. You know, every day they're worried somebody's going to find out they're not, you know. Yeah. Good because they've got everybody's got this imposter syndrome, <laughs> yeah. and I think, but I think, you know, every th that's why I a lot of times push people. It's like, hey, let's get let's get some short book out there, so you can see hit publish. You can say you're a published author and get past that little part because, man, that's half the battle. It's just like, well, I can't, you, know, you can't do. It. It's like, man, all you do is hit publish. Yeah. Well, two things come to mind there. And, you know, there's this, um, I'm Australian, we curse, but I won't curse, but it's called the itty bitty <clears throat> committee in your head, right? And that's that negative voice that, that often, you know, says, oh, your book's going to be terrible. It's never going to sell. And, you know, I'm an imposter. Well, here's the truth. Exactly what you hear, the opposite is true. So when you think I can't do this book, who's going to be interested in this? This is really boring. The opposite is true. And I remember Ray sitting in one of those. Um, That's um, that, hold on. That's amazing. I've I've been studying this imposter syndrome. I've never heard anybody <laughs> say it like that. That is, yeah, what a simple way to to make that to fix that. Okay, keep going. Yeah. So when you hear this will ever work, you go, mm -hmm, okay. So what's the opposite? This will work. That's the truth. Okay. Yeah. And well, I was just gonna, well, I was just gonna say, and a lot of the time. You're, you're so good at something that you think, well, everyone must know it. No one wants to hear it from oh, me. Yeah, absolutely. We get sick and, of our own story yeah. and we undermine our own value. But here's the beautiful thing too, and I'm so pleased you mentioned this, that which you see as no value, that which comes to you the easiest that you go, who's going to want to buy that? Everybody knows that. Who's going to want to learn that? Everybody knows that. That is where you have your greatest value because Nobody actually does know that. That's your unique zone of genius. And so when you just give stuff away, like I used to, you know, give PR away and PR tips and speaking, I'm like, who needs to know that? Who's going to pay for that? Everybody knows that. And what I discovered was not everybody does know that. You do. And that's why you should be selling it. So if you are currently undermining your own value, have a look at what you're undermining because that could be your most profitable product yet. It's, yeah. So another epiphany and it, we talked, I talked about it earlier, but I've just, that's the thing that I, I was like, Hey, it's, I can't be marketing how to be an Amazon bestseller because that's easy. I need this <laughs> big complex course in this, this, and, and then all of a sudden I started and it wasn't selling. And all of a sudden I started seeing in these Facebook groups, Hey, anybody know how to be an Amazon bestseller? I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's easy. And so I scaled down, created a course just on that because it's not easy if you haven't done it. Yeah, well, yeah. If you've done it a hundred times, like me and help clients, yeah, it's it, I, I don't don't even worry yeah. about it. But for somebody who's just starting, it's like that's it. I'm, I go. I finally had to go back and say, yeah, wait a minute. When I first started, that was intimidating, and now and you know, and so okay, let's just focus on that. And when I did that, everything kind of turned around and. 
by focusing on that. And I'll, I'll, I want to ask you about the visible impact system. But before that, what do you do? So you mentioned vomiting before this call. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but what do you do if you're like me and you're like, I I'm not afraid to talk, but everybody else vomits before I come on stage? What do, what do you do in that case? Well, I, I'm, I'm just a sure joke. Just yeah. a good, no, 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 that's, that's cool. I'm not sure I understand <laughs> the question. You mean nerves for other people? No, I'm just saying I make people vomit. I was trying to make a joke. <laughs> Scratch that one. That didn't work. But see, I'm testing it from stage. Now I know not to use it in one of my videos, right? <laughs> it's actually a really great point because, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's some men who feel this way. But as a woman, you know, I've many times I've thought I don't want to get on video. I need to lose 20 pounds before I get on video. I need another outfit before I get on stage. They dress so nicely on stage and I'm so imperfect. And But here's the thing. It's not about you or me. It's about who's waiting out there to hear the message that we have. And we want to be relatable as well. We want to give people permission. And so if we're constantly striving for that perfection and we're constantly being perfect, we become completely unrelatable. And what I found years ago, I was actually um, a party planner, a direct seller, you know, like Tupperware. And what I found was, is that, you know, I did it so well that I, the people didn't want to join my team because they were like, well, you're so good at it. There's no way I could do that. And I started to realize that I needed to be more relatable. I needed to be less perfect and I needed to be able to encourage other people to come to that next step so that they could live what they wanted to do. So sometimes when we are too perfect, then it dissuades and it disencourages people. So be you, no one else can be you. Be funny, make jokes that no one else gets. When they realize that I get it, everyone will laugh. Who cares? Oh, right, he tells me. I think you're speaking to me directly, are you? <laughs> But I love that. And you'll be memorable. You'll be so different to the robots on stage who are perfect in there. You know, and I, you know, I see some people and I'm like, ah, there's no way I can do that. In fact, I was sent a video just recently um, to, to copy. Uh, I needed to do an introduction video for uh, America's largest women's networking organization. I was speaking at one of their chapters um, on the other side of the country. And they said, oh, we want you to do an introductory video to our group. And here's the one that we want you to model. And they'd been using Using it, I had a look at the day. Watched it, and I'm like, "There's no way in hell I can do that." Um, it was too perfect, so I, I gave myself permission to be me. And here's the cool thing about it: um, they loved the video so much, they boosted it. They used their own money to boost it. They have they had over 3,200 views, still counting. They sold out the room. They got new members from it, and my video is now the one that they're sending to all future speakers as the one to replicate and to copy. And all because I looked at it and I went, that's not me. I'm going to, I have to only do it the way that I can do it. And that's relatable. So be you and, and, and share what you have in your genius in the world. And I, there was something else you said in there. Well, I, you're triggering a lot of ideas and then I <laughs> forget them because I'm still having my coffee. But one of them was the idea that people are almost more relatable to somebody who's just one step ahead than 10. Yeah. So if, if I, if I like everybody, yeah, you think, well, everybody wants to take it, it, even pricing wise, you know, I, I know Brendan Burchard says something like, why can't you have the same price course as me? And it's like, well, cause you're Brendan Burchard. And so I, how could I, it's like, yeah, but some people want to learn from the person who just did it and it's more relatable and it's not five years old the experience. It's last month I did this and you can do it too. Yeah. And, and so that, that, that next step is, is great. And also the, uh, this, this whole idea that being yourself is cool. I mean, I just got an email yesterday from somebody. It's like, I, I love your sense of humor and, and, uh, but I don't think this course is for me. And I replied and said, and it was, I basically, I have an email that goes out, says I was spying on you. And he says, if you were spying, you'd know this, but I love your sense of humor. And because and, I'm a fiction author. And I said, well, actually, this works. This Amazon bestseller works for fiction authors, too. And but the first response was how I would normally respond. I said, so you're saying you don't think I'm 007 material. And that's just my sense. Of humor. That's what I would send to my friends. That's what I sent to, to him. And next thing I know, he's buying the course. So. Um, and that, that wasn't the reason I did it. It was just that I'm, I've done trying to be this 
fit in a box cookie cutter person. I'm just going to be me. You like me or not. And I, I want people that like my sense of humor or, or don't get my jokes like you, you know, so. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing too. And if you're pretending to be someone else, you then what the pressure to then deliver a program pretending to be someone else. When you are authentically you, you get your people. And that then means that you get to work with people who share your value, share your sense of humor. And now it's no longer work. Now it's fun. Um, and you know, like I look at Brendan Burchard and he's amazing, but I've never bought any of his programs cause I can't relate to him, but I like Russell Brunson cause he's perfectly imperfect. And you know, when I started on video, you have a look at Mari Folio and you, you look at Mari Folio stuff, you're like, Oh my goodness, there's no way I could do that. But the really cool thing is that Mari Folio shares some of her vaults, some of her videos in her archive vaults. And she didn't start out to be Mari Folio. You know, she started out where everybody does this, like the first time they get on stage, just like the first time um, they get on video. And I agree with you, Ray. People want to work with someone who's just that step ahead of them. And here's that cool thing, because we're relatable, right? And they can aspire to that. It's The goal is reachable, it's, it's achievable, and it's realistic, you know? But as you grow as, a, as an author, as you grow as a coach, and you go to that next level, then they come to the next level. So you can be constantly rising together. And I love the phrase, you know, rising tide lifts all ships. So you can be, by getting your genius out into the world, by giving yourself permission to get started, you're giving them permission and then you can all grow together. And then you can be uh, Brendan Burchard if you want to be or Mari Folio or, or, you know, Russell Brunson. But, but the world does already have that. The world doesn't have you. And so that's what we're encouraging you to do, to step up and claim the spot because you could end up being as big, if not bigger than all of those people. And there's people out there waiting for you to claim that. So go get it. That's what I say. I mean, this is fortuitous because it's, it's it, if people that are watching this from my peeps, group of peeps, uh, you know, it's, they've either, they're thinking about writing a book or they've done the book and they're kind of looking for that next step. And if you've done the book, you realize there was a lot of work involved, but there was not the, the, all that stuff that was in my head about not being able to do it and intimidation. No, it was just getting, it was just working and getting it done. None of that other stuff was true. The same goes for this next step. And, and that's, you know, jumping and speaking, monetizing your book, monetizing your message, um, which is leads us into what, what is, we've talked, I've heard you talk about the visible impact system. What is that? Yeah, well, we have a, um, a free online training coming up and, and, and the, here's the thing about your book. Um, you know, I was a consultant editor for a, a true crime novel that was shortlisted for a national award. It was about um, Queensland's first serial killer in Australia. And we had a PR team. It was a publishing house. It was Allen and Unwin, a really big publishing house. And they did such limited publicity. So even if you have a PR team, if you, you know, you can afford one, no one is going to promote and publicize your book like you do. Unfortunately, there aren't going to be people sitting on the lawn outside when you wake up in the morning, you go outside who are waiting there to have your book. So you need to think about how am I going to market this? What are the different ways that I can market it? And one of the most powerful ones, honestly, truly is speaking. And so what Michelle, my business partner, Michelle um, Lang and I have is we have an online training and I go further into when you're speaking, you're selling from stage. I share with you, uh, my funnel. So just as I talked about, I was speaking in rooms into a workshop and then I sold, actually sold into a two and a half day program. I share with you that full sales funnel. So you can actually get a visual on, if I have my book, how can I monetize this? So I share that with you. And I also show you and share with you some, um, some, some beginner strategies, but honestly, some next level strategies of how I convert so high. And I do have a killer conversion, even on high price 25K products. But I started with a two and a half size, I started with a very small product that then led into a $2,500 product. And then I gradually went up to 4,500 and then 12 and a half and then 15 and then 25. So you, I show you the evolution of that process and what you can be doing in your signature talk to not be giving away the farm. Cause a lot of authors are like, but I don't want to share all my book because then no one's going to buy it. So I share you, I share with you how to pull the best from your books. So there are people still leaning in who do want to buy and how to create that crushing offer. Um, so all of that is laid out for you and you do get a downloadable sheet that you can use. You do get things that you can go away and implement immediately that can literally be making huge differences overnight. In fact, um, two of the teaching points that I share in this online training, and I've had seasoned speakers come and say to me, literally telling you no one else is sharing this 
when I shared this with one of my clients, the very first session, um, and he implemented that in 24 hours, he went from four weeks of not selling anything from the same product to 12 and a half thousand dollars in 24 hours and i'm going to be sharing those tips with you that very strategy i gave him on the free online training and then i've obviously video is huge you heard me talk about how i used video to help fill an event and that's where michelle's genius comes in she's going to share with you the videos that you need to get people to events um, the videos you need to be publicizing your book to engage to convert to get those sales because it, again it's not just about getting on video for the sake of getting on video it's not about getting on stage for the sake of getting on stage is actually about engagement capturing leads engaging those leads and then converting those leads into sales so you can do more of what you love and help others do the same and so the best way to learn about that is on the upcoming training yes yes I'm upcoming sure training somewhere around here <laughs> I wasn't sure how much, what you, you've got the URL, right? My brain is not for that. It's not, it, it, it's a little lackadaisy with jokes sometimes. It's a little lackadaisy with URLs, but you have that. Uh, and we have it coming up next week, of course, on, I think that's the 28th, Thursday, August 20th. Just click the link and you'll yeah. get all the full detail. My mind's for, I'm a story hunter, not a schedule hunter. So. <laughs> Me, I can't be bothered with a calendar. I, it's. <laughs> I think it's, is it Sunday? What day is today? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we are filming this. Uh, we are live now, whatever day it is. And <laughs> so how, if, if somebody wants to connect with you and ask you more about the training or just you know, get in touch, we're going to have the link is on this video somewhere, but what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Yeah, awesome. Um, you can email me, guys. So you can email, email me at Tanya with a Y at TanyaTarget.com. Um, so that's Tanya with a Y and Target with two T's at the end. Uh, and also um, join our Visible Impact Facebook group. So you can come and join us there. I'm also on Twitter uh, as uh, Tanya Target Camacho and I'm on Instagram as Tanya Target Camacho. So come and connect with me there. Let me know what you're doing in the world. Let me know if your book's out, what your book's on um, and what you have coming up if your book's yet to be released. So I'd love to connect with you further and really, really appreciate this time. I love what you're doing. I love, I went to your website, Ray, and I was watching your video and I love how you talk about the power of the story. And it really is, guys, all about the power of the story. You know, the Bible is a story. People don't remember facts. They remember stories. And so what you are doing is creating these, these gold gems, these nuggets that people can be passing down from person to person and perhaps even generation to generation. So give yourself permission and tap into that value of your story on a much even bigger field than what you're doing right now and get out there and be your own PR machine and start speaking to self from stage. I got to say, I think this is one of the most exciting things I've heard and I get eight ideas a day. I'm like, I need to do that. I need to do that. I need to do that. But the, when I'm going to go back to the middle where you said, you know, we can help people get on stage in five weeks and making money from that. Uh, that's appealing because for me, I need to see results quickly or I'm on to the next thing, the next little shiny thing that flashes in front of me. So this is cool. I will be there. I hope all of you watching will be there and uh, check out the free training session. And Tanya, great to have you. Great talking to you. And I will see you on the next episode of Downton Under. <laughs> Thank you so yeah. much. We'll Ryan. see you on the training. Thanks everybody for watching and we will talk to you soon. Thank you.